Waking Up on Revival is here again. They may be able to track your past. They knew where you were born, how you were born, whether you were born in wedlock, out of wedlock, over wedlock, under wedlock. But they can't track where it is God is taking you to. Because God does not consult your past to bless you in your future. Hello friend, this is Revival is here again. I'm sure you're getting ready to come into oof, something really, really exciting and great. These messages were trapped from live services in our church family, Revival House of Glory International Church. And I'm sure that God is about to really push you to levels untold as we capture uh, the great grace, the anointing where we, this message were preached. Get ready. Revival is here again. This is Goodheart Obiakum, the host of Rehab. Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Good Heart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's Word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's Word through His choice vessel, Good Heart O.B. Equime. Romans 8, 17 to 18, and a second companion text, Psalm 51, verse 17. Are you there? Let's read together as a family. And if we as his children, then are we his, his also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering, so that we may also share in his glory. For I consider from the standpoint of faith, amplified, that the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. Let me read to your hearing. This is from the Amplified. If it's on the screen Amplified, you can read together with me. One, two, three, go. And if we are his children, then we are his, his also, his of God and fellow his with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering, so that we may also share in his glory. For I consider from the standpoint of faith that the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed in us and to us. Psalm 51, 17. Psalm 51, 17. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. Ah, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, such, oh God, you will not despise. Can we read that together? My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, such, O God, you will not despise. Hallelujah. For an assignment this morning, broken for glory. Father, we thank you for blessing the reading of your word. Now bless the teaching or perhaps the preaching of the selfsame word. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let somebody shout a big amen. amen. Before you're seated, touch your neighbor, two, three, four, broken for glory. All right. Broken for glory. The life we are called to live in God is a progressive life. That the path of a just man shines brighter and brighter even to the day of perfection. I've oftentimes said that 
in walking with God, you have a guarantee that this would be the least of your shining. That you are not allowed and permitted to have a better yesterday than tomorrow. It is a taboo, perhaps a curse, if not a misnomer, for you to have a better yesterday than tomorrow. It is not right to say, where are the good old days? Because it is indicative you're saying that today are the bad new days. As a child of God, no matter what you've experienced so far, there must be something within you that tells you it's going to get better. Can you prophesy to your neighbor and tell them it is going to get better? I don't know what stage, what phase, what level, what dimension in life you're in, but it's going to get better. Hallelujah. It is my sincere joy once again to welcome every one of us into the new season that God has brought us into as a family. It isn't just another new month. It isn't just another quarter. But by way of a spiritual calendar, by way of heaven's agenda program and calendar for us, he has brought you and I into a new season in our journey of glory unveiled. Somebody shout a big amen. Yeah. Beloved, it is evident that God is evidently doing something special across the nations. He's doing that right here, but I tell you, it is happening in different places, different spots, different locations, different cities, and different nations. And what is God really doing? He is deliberately preparing the church for his second coming. He is intentionally and deliberately preparing the church for his second coming. The Bible declares in Isaiah 40, 3 to 5, which really is one of our four core pilot texts as an apostolic commission. Isaiah 40, 3 to 5 is one of them. Matthew 6, 33 is another. And of course, Zechariah 4, 6. I read, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Now these are the things that God is doing upon the face of the earth. Before the arrival of his glory. Filling valleys. The valleys of fears and tears have been filled. Leveling mountains. The mountains of pride and arrogance, they have been leveled. Making smooth, rough and crooked places so that a highway can be made, not just physically, but made in the hearts of men to receive the coming glory. Preparation precedes the manifestation of the glory of the Lord. Beloved, it is very important for every one of us to become more awakened and spiritually aware of the spiritual calendar and divine timings as pertaining to God. Not just the Gregorian calendar only, not just the chronos, the chronological time as what time it is, but what time it is as pertaining to heaven's agenda program here on the earth. We must understand from prophetic scriptures that it is at the same time wherein the earth will be experiencing doom, gloom, and darkness, ah, that the light of the glory of the Lord in the greatest form of intensity will be made revealed and made manifest on the earth. We must understand from prophetic scriptures that it's at the same time as it appears that the devil is messing that God will be blessing. The Bible declares in Isaiah 61 to 2, Arise, shine, 
for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Wow. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Gados Kenebada. That means what God is said to do in this day and age is not going to be concealed any longer. It's going to be revealed. What God is going to be doing in your life will not need you to tell the story. As one gentleman said a moment ago, that you will have no need to testify, but your life is going to become a testament. Oh, kodo, kodo, kodo. That you have no need to necessarily stand up to say, oh, I was blind, but now I can see. Uh, but people can see you right now and they will not be able to reconcile the you they see today from the you they knew yesterday. Oh, come on. If that's you, I'm speaking to shout a big amen. amen. You have to understand that people may know your history, but there is no guarantee that they will know your destiny. They may be able to track your past. They knew where you were born, how you were born, whether you were born in wedlock, out of wedlock, over wedlock, under wedlock. But they can't track where it is God is taking you to. Because God does not consult your past to bless you in your future. God has no need to examine your history to bless you in your destiny. What you need to know is that God is preparing a people to receive and to walk in His glory on the earth like never before. Somebody shout, here I am, Lord. Amen. Coming up soon on Revival is here again. You are not designed to be a chicken house. You're not designed to be an eagle's nest. You're not even designed to be a boy's quarter. You're not designed to be a bungalow. You're not even designed to be a seven bedroom duplex. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low the rough ground shall become level the rugged places a plain and the glory of the lord will be revealed and all people will see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken forget the former things do not dwell on the past see i am doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. It is often asked, where is the God of Elijah? Well, the time has come to seek the Elijahs of God. Revival House of Glory International Church, carrying the torch of revival across the nations. Prophetic Prayer Altar GPPA is a worldwide non-denominational prayer network online and now GPPA goes terrestrial. Join hearts with thousands of others from around the globe to pray together live for one hour 
with Apostle Goodheart Obi Ekweme on the Global Prophetic Prayer Altar right here. Greetings 105.7 FM Abuja, Passion 94.5 FM Uyo, Excel FM 103.7 Port Harcourt, Urban Radio 94.5 FM Enugu and on Darling 107.3 FM Oweri. It's from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Mondays to Fridays with more than one year and over 300 hours of testimony provoking prayer already logged online. GPPA is now available on radio. Akasagada, Akasagada. We celebrate you, Jesus, for all that you've been doing. It's one hour of prayer every day to open the heavens and reorder your destiny as we pray live Mondays to Fridays from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. GPPA Online and Terrestrial is an altar for the global gathering of God chasers and Jesus lovers and a first from the Horn of Revival Ministry. So without you, you appear to be catching hell. <laughs> uh, no fruit on the vine. No field. No, no, no fruit on the field. Things don't seem like they're working. So things may look like they're out of whack around you, but it will surprise you that for the believer, that whilst things seem to be out of place without, ha, kotoskata, at the same time, God is changing you within. God does carry on diaba. At the same time, it looks like you are catching hell around you. God is working a deep work of transformation within you. Katosa. That's why you see some plants have moments when they go into what is called a hibernation mode. In a hibernation mode, you don't see much progress. You don't see it. You don't see much advancement. You don't see it. You don't quite see much uh, 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 fruit. You don't see. But in the moment of hibernation, the plant is renewing itself, replenishing itself to bounce back again to a season of fruitfulness like never before. So you may see, oh God, no, it. You may see right now that you are on hibernation mode. Uh, and that means there were people who were born on the same day as you were born. They went to the same school as you went to, had the same degree, had the same opportunity. But it does look like when you look at your life in some regards, whether it's in your finances, in your marital destiny, in your academics, in one way or the other, it almost looked like those you began with just came and zoop, zoop. Zoop. And you're wondering, God, where are you in all of this? Listen, it may seem that God may have kept you in what I call a holding pattern or hibernation mode because you are going to bounce back. Not just the same way, but you are going to spring a surprise on yourself. You are going to spring a surprise on your enemies. You are going to spring a surprise to your colleagues. But guess what? I tell you, you are going to spring a surprise to the devil. The devil will wonder what just hit him. Because God is about to move you from what you thought was a slow lane into the fast lane because you were on hibernation mode. You've got to understand that the strength of a foundation determines how high the tower can go. It's a particular design I have before me now, about eight or nine story building. And I look at the design and I see that the, the foundation is, quite, is quite, a, quite a situation. In fact, the cost to lay the foundation of the eight story building can build you multiple duplexes. I tell you something. But when all that money is being thrown on the ground, all those rods are being thrown on the ground. Kotos kataya. All that rock is being thrown on the ground. Nobody seems to see it. Nobody seems to appreciate it. Nobody seems to value it. But God knows you are not designed to be a chicken house. You're not designed to be an eagle's nest. You're not even designed to be a boy's quarter. You're not designed to be a bungalow. 
You're not even designed to be a seven bedroom duplex. No. In the realm of the spirit, I don't know who I'm talking to. You are designed by God to be a 10 tower building. A 12 tower building. A 21 tower building. And you think that God is just going to build? No, no, no. God must take time to do some stuff underground. In hibernation mode. So that when the glory comes, oh, come in again. You have the wherewithal, the resilience. My God, I feel this. You have the capacity to carry the glory. Ha. We have only seen a sneak preview of what God is about to do in this house. You ain't seen nothing yet. Write it down. Pastor Kenny, for a people who God is going to bless, God is going to lift, God is going to empower, God is going to glorify as he has proposed to do so in us, through us, for us, with us. Listen, we must be a people who are prepared to go through the school of brokenness. The higher you go in him, the more he humbles you. A really great man in God cannot be prideful. One of the real tests or footprints or characteristics or DNA of a man who is great and a man who God is going to make great is a man who is broken and humble. You have to understand, in the kingdom, the upper modus operandi is different from the world system. In the world system, the Gentiles have to rule to lord it over one another. But in the kingdom, they that will be great, not bad to be great, but they that will be great must be willing to serve others. Are you here? Wow. You have to understand there is something different from the outer life and the inner life. As believers, we need to understand that apart from the outer life, and the outer life has to do with your natural experiences, what you touch, what you feel, what you handle, what is going around you. As real, please listen, I'm really teaching, as real as your outer life experiences are as real if not more real is the inner life within you so you understand sometimes appears as though the outer life is subject <laughs> to different degrees of pain difficulty hardship challenges troubles. In Nigeria we call it Wahala. The Global Prophetic Prayer Altar is a worldwide and interdenominational prayer network. All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. Jesus asked his disciples to tarry for one hour with him and he has made that call again today. This is a call to people everywhere to congregate in a world without barriers and to invest global prayer power to make all things conform to God's will. Join Apostle Goodheart Ekwene online every weekday at www.radio.logic.org or on Facebook and Instagram at Apostle Goodheart or download Horn of Revival Ministry app free at Google Play and Apple stores. GPPA is an altar for the global gathering of God chasers and Jesus lovers.
right, people, that's how far we can go on today's broadcast of Revival is Here Again. Half a truth, Revival is really here again. Whoa, what energy, what passion, what light, what zest, what vigor, what vitality. I'm sure you're pumped up, but beyond being pumped up, I'm sure the word of life has come to transform you, change you, and shift you, and take you to lift on to, well, this is Revival is here again with Good Harobi Akwema, and I challenge you and encourage you to be a part of this broadcast each time the airwaves are open. I want to pray for as many people under the sound of my voice who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, heaven is a reality. Hell is a reality. Don't let anybody deceive you. Somebody once said, if you miss heaven, you will not miss hell. You will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Every man has a choice and your choices and your decisions lead to your destination. Now, Jesus Christ has come to the earth, paid the price for entire mankind, the entire human race, but we at some point have to make the choice to receive him. Now, this hour, you can invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Can you bow your heads together with me wherever you are upon the face of the earth? Let's pray sincerely to our Father in heaven. Bow your heads, let's pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am. I lift my heart and my hands unto you as my sign of surrender. Forgive me all of my sins. From today, I turn over my entire life to you as my Lord and my God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare I'm blood washed and blood bought in Jesus' wondrous name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, hearty, Congratulations. I want to hear from you. Send us email, call us, want to send materials to you and stand together with you in faith. And wherever you are located upon the face of the earth, I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you'll be established and you'll thrive and flourish like nowhere else, where the Word of God will shift you and move you to where you belong in Christ. Meanwhile, let's get together in the next rehab broadcast. Remember, Revival is here again. This is Good Heart. We'll be coming. Wishing you a wonderful day and a glorious week. Love you much. Good Heart. Signing out. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Good Heart Obi Akweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life. And we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.